I would like to move on also in the interest of time and um, talk about then um, interpretation of the of the findings that, that will then help with putting a final summary or findings table um, together. And I have I have chosen one of two approaches that the for presentation um, given um, um, the time that we have available that the working group is is currently or has has some um, developed so far. Um, I have chosen the partially contextualized um, framework for interpreting network meta analysis. And I will ask Romina to um, chime in at any time if she has anything to, to add to that, um, given that she has led this, um, um, this work um, very astutely. Um, the partially contextualized framework for interpreting network meta analysis considers the importance and the magnitude of the effects that compare the interventions without, however, a full regard of all outcomes that um, um, so far that um, have been part of the PICO. So it's a per outcome based um, approach um, um, again, but that will help with at the end to bring both the benefits and the, the harms actually together. When I say importance, I mean the relative importance that is placed on the on the outcomes that we are considering and the magnitude um, is referring to the actual estimates of the effect in absolute terms. I chose a, um, an example um, where um, we applied essentially work that we've done um, for um, both Great and, and, and Cochrane um, uh, um, for pairwise comparisons that um, again um, is then um, um, helping us with the interpretation of that example that I'm going to show you. So um, much of this is based on work of the, on the evidence to decision frameworks that um, Great has developed. Um, then um, the interpretation of both the magnitude of the effect of an effect as well as the certainty that we have in an effect. Um, this is from the um, 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 two sources. One is a um, Great guidance paper number 27 as well as the um, handbook chapter in the um, systematic in the Cochrane Systematic Review Handbook of, on Interventions, um, chapter number 15, interpreting results and drawing conclusions. Um, essentially what we what we um, um, did in this work is we um, tried to combine the um, interpretation of the certainty of the evidence and the actual magnitude in, of the effect into a narrative um, statement that expresses both this has been this is work that has been led by Nancy Santeso um, um, over um, the last years, and again, um, is based very much on the cartoon, the cartoon that uh, Romina showed you in the in the very beginning, expressing the um, magnitude of the effect as well as the certainty of the evidence that we have into it, in in it. Um, I will make this relatively um, um, quick now. Um, so the example that I that I um, looked at or that we lo that we looked at is a network and a meta analysis of interventions for acute diarrhea and gastroenteritis in children. The population is children with diarrhea and gastroenteritis. Um, the intervention and comparisons are pharmacological and you know, nutritional interventions, um, including placebo. Um, and this is based on a systematic review by Ivan Flores and colleagues. The main outcomes are described here. I will focus on one of them, which is the um, duration of diarrhea that um, uh, um, is um, um, hopefully reduced by these interventions and we are focusing on a mean difference. A negative value means that there's a reduction in the duration of diarrhea. Um, positive value means there's an increase in the duration. This is the um, network geometry. Um, there were 27 interventions, um, so a complex network, um, 138 studies, um, over 20,000 participants, um, 62 direct comparisons. 351 pairwise comparisons. And um, I think we chose this complex example to also show that this can be done. Um, the outcome is a continuous outcome. And there are four steps essentially in the interpretation. Again, this is the interpretation for a partially contextualized approach. The first is the choice of the reference treatment and the threshold for effect sizes. Uh, the second is the classification based on the comparisons with the reference that is being chosen. This may be um, placebo, no active treatment, or another intervention that is considered standard treatment. The identification of um, according to the quality or certainty of the evidence, and then checking the consistency with pairwise comparisons and the actual ran rankings. I'll start with the first one. Um, um, the first is, again, choosing the reference and the decision thresholds. Um, um, the reference in this case may be the treatment that is most connected um, to others in the network. 
um, um, if more if there's more than one treatment that is highly connected, one would probably choose the one for which there is the highest quality when compared to others. In this case, um, this is considered the um, the actual reference um, treatment here. Um, so it's um, um, Zn plus Mn. Um, the second step is to choose a threshold um, that represents, based on the evidence to decision framework, work um, that we did um, that um, represents a small um, um, but important effect, a moderate effect, and a large effect. And um, although that is often difficult for systematic review authors to do, in reality, it is required for interpreting the results of a network meta-analysis when it comes to decision-making. These thresholds, um, um, there's different ways of doing this, this is not part of this presentation, but um, um, in this case, the thresholds were def um, um, decided by um, a priori by the um, um, network meta-analysts um, um, together with clinicians who were part of this um, team, and a small but important effect was um, deemed to be an increase um, or a decrease by three hours, moderate effect, a decrease or increase by 12 hours, and a large effect, a decrease or increase of diarrhea duration of 24 hours. Um, so that choice needs to be made. The second is a classification based on the comparison with the reference. This is just um, to demonstrate what I, what I just referred to, um, uh, the um, different thresholds that were, just, that were um, identified. So again, um, less or um, less than three hours, um, um, either decrease or increase was considered to be um, a trivial or no effect, and that's represented by these two estimates um, here. Um, ignoring the actual confidence intervals, that's an important point for the partially contextualized um, um, rating. Then a small effect would be something that um, um, is more than three hours based on the point estimate. Um, either decrease or increase, moderate estimate, and a large estimate, always focusing here on the point estimate. And I'll get back to why this is important. Um, it's actually putting less emphasis on imprecision in the context of a great rating. Um, this is my very quick example for you. If you had a point estimate of 0 0.8 and a confidence interval of 0 0.61 to 0 0.99, it would be precise. But if there was risk of bias and you had moderate certainty, um, you would probably not place higher certainty into an estimate that may not be statistically significant. So here indicated here, confidence interval overlapping one um, that has no risk of bias, but is suffering from slight imprecision. Both of them had moderate certainty. Therefore, in this particular approach, in the initial approach, we are focusing on the point estimate of the effects. So then um, um, looking at the actual estimates of the effect, um, the classification based on the comparison with the reference um, would be undertaken. We use the point estimate of the relative estimate for the time being here. Um, and then um, um, as an example, a classification here, this is the mean difference in hours, for instance, for micronutrients, um, a decrease by 0 0.68 hours that could be considered trivial or no effect, some um, cal and pectin five hours, small benefit, um, reduction, um, zinc, um, 18 hours, a moderate benefit, and zinc and probiotics, more than 24 hours, as I said, um, a large benefit based on that first um, presentation. All of the interventions could be listed in this particular way, um, just focusing so far on the actual point estimates. Um, again, we are looking here for a way of interpreting the results, which is complicated enough, and there are probably many different ways of doing it. This is one way of structuring it and making it helpful for decision makers. Um, because at the end of the day, we need to express the magnitude of the potential benefits and harms in order to weigh the benefits and the harms in a decision-making context. Um, again, um, this would be simply based on the actual effect estimates for the time being, um, large, moderate, small, beneficial effect, and then trivial to no effect. And then there's even one that has a small harmful effect. The next is the identification according to the certainty of the evidence. Um, Romina took you through this, but essentially we would now produce a table that um, um, includes a rating of the certainty of the evidence for the actual um, um, interventions that we've described. Um, so at the certainty rating to that base, uh, um, together with the actual 
magnitude of the estimate of the of the effect. So those that have been classified as providing a large beneficial effect would then um, um, the the interpreter would then see that for that largest effect there was only very low certainty, but for other interventions that provided a large effect there was a moderate or high certainty of the evidence. And um, that helps us with when we bring both of these types of these pieces of information together. It helps us with a um, classification. Before we do that, we actually try to check the consistency with pairwise comparisons and rankings. So um, what we do here is that we make sure that the classification is consistent, as I said, with the pairwise comparisons between non-reference treatments. That's both for the estimate and the quality of evidence. So for instance, smectide and zinc have moderate quality of evidence of a large benefit. Vitamin A has very low quality of evidence for a small benefit. Um, then um, if we look at the actual pairwise comparison, as long as this information is available, available smectide and zinc versus vitamin A, um, interestingly enough, um, do indeed provide um, a further reduction or provide a, um, smectide and zinc provides a, um, um, a large effect also compared with vitamin A, moderate quality of evidence. So um, we can probably um, um, not only based on that, um, 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 indirect comparison, also in the direct comparison, conclude that there is indeed a benefit of smectide and zinc over vitamin A. So that um, um, is then added, um, that is then supplemented by um, the um, um, sucra, um, which is um, um, listed here. Um, as you see, we are then looking at the consistency also with the sucra, and, and the sucra doesn't necessarily consider or doesn't consider the certainty of the evidence. So um, um, if you were to just go with it, then you might draw different conclusions um, from an interpretation that includes both the certainty of the evidence and the magnitude of the, of the effect. Um, um, but it helps us with making sure that, yes, we are probably in the right ballpark. So um, if we were now to focus on the actual interpretation, as you can see, if you combine both the magnitude of the effect and the certainty of the evidence, you would see that these three interventions here are probably the ones that provide that we have both most certainty in and provide the largest effect. So um, a conclusion would then be when considering all of the interventions, these um, interventions that I just described, these three result based on moderate certainty of the evidence. And that's the language that we could use because we are pretty certain in a large reduction of diarrhea duration um, because we have moderate or high certainty. Um, that second group also um, these other um, um, three here, all interventions also provide a large benefit, but we have low certainty or very low certainty in them. And therefore, um, our interpretation would be different. We might say may result in a large reduction of diarrhea um, duration. And then finally, there is some um, 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 obviously interventions that have a moderate um, um, effect and moderate certainty. And there, again, we would choose language such as that these interventions result in a moderate reduction of diarrhea duration because of that moderate certainty. So um, I um, only presented the partially contextualized interpretation, which includes um, a setting thresholds for small, moderate, and large effects. Um, these frameworks add guiding principles. They are a process, the, the process is based on the degree of contextualization that is consistent with making decisions. And these frameworks do not yet create a full contextualization, which includes some um, really looking across all of the interventions, but they are um, a step into um, that um, um, direction. This is what we talked about. Thanks very much for your, for your attention.